While you're standing, we're going to get right into it. Turn your Bibles to the book of Galatians chapter 5. As we touch and agree, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Before we read this morning's scriptural text, let's touch and agree with the spirit of agreement because we are so excited about what God is doing here at the Greenhouse International Church. Also at this time, let's welcome our viewing audience. Give them a great big hand for tuning in this morning to be a part of this greenhouse experience. This is my Bible. And today, I declare it to be my final absolute authority. Now ask your neighbor, got fruit? But let's look at the opening text, which we've been working through for the last four weeks and now week five as we conclude this series of God Fruit. And I pray this tag team message has been a blessing to your life. I pray you will go to the media booth and purchase it and put it in your library and buy one for your brother or sister and pass it on to someone else. All five weeks should have been a blessing to your life. Paul writes in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse number 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Put your hands together while you're still standing, and let's welcome the birthday girl as she comes to break down the spirit of meekness. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus this morning. I don't know about you. Anybody just come to adore on the Lord this morning? Amen. We come to talk about meekness this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. One of the, as we get ready to go into uh, the word meekness this morning, one of the definitions of uh, meekness is that you have to... Um, be lowliness and it doesn't mean low in your character but sometimes you'll step back and allow somebody else to shine so I haven't actually got into my message yet but my time is already running but if you will just allow me because I know that it's my birthday this week week uh, this Wednesday but one of my daughters has celebrated her birthday on yesterday and see I'm, I'm gonna be 46 and she turned 17 and I've had plenty birthdays oh somebody let me tell you cuz I'm, I'm I'm a, I'm a mama's girl, amen? I know most girls be daddy's girls, but I was a mama's girl, and mama made every made sure every year was a special day. And see, on Wednesday, I wouldn't be surprised at turning 46. Sister Decca don't get a birthday cake from her mama. Oh, come on, somebody. So I just want you, Will, just to love on Loretta for me because I don't know what it feel like not to have celebrated my birthday. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to yield myself. I'm going to yield my witness to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because birthdays are important. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Lady Decker loves you this morning. Amen. Somebody say you got fruit. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Ask your neighbor. You got fruit. And as we get ready to close out this series talking about God fruit, Pastor open up in Galatians, the fifth chapter, telling us about 22 through 23. But it, it has been puzzling me. I'm like, God, but why did you set up about fruit? And he said, the reason I told you about fruit is because in the verse right before it, see, that's why you can't just get stuck right there. Because if you look at Galatians 5, starting with verse number 19, there was some things that was going on that displeased God. And see, either you for God or you against God this morning. Either you have the fruit of God or you have the lust of the flesh this morning. You operating in one or the other this morning. There is no gray area as we as church folk like to put it. You know, because we like to sin, we like to do our own thing. But either we're walking in the fruit of the spirit or we're walking in sin this morning. So this morning, we're going to do like an evaluation card. You get to evaluate yourself. Your neighbor not going to evaluate you. You're going to evaluate yourself this morning. Tell yourself you got fruit. Oh no, you need to say it like you mean it this morning. Tell yourself. Say you got fruit. 
Amen. This morning, we, when we transform from a sinner to a saint as believers, the Holy Spirit is commanded to deposit something on the inside of us. And the thing that the Holy Spirit deposited on the inside of us when we went from being a sinner to a saint is the fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit is there. The fruit, the seed is on the inside of you. But the fruit may not be manifesting. It may not be producing yet. And the reason the fruit is not producing because you haven't watered it yet oh come on somebody uh, because you, you you're still sitting in your state where the seed is just sitting there but any good farmer know if you put the seed in the ground and you never go back to water it the, what you planted will never come up so the Holy Spirit put the seed inside of you this morning but you're going to have to water it with your praise this morning you're going to have to water it with your worship this morning you're going to have to water it with the word of God this morning there's no longer that you can just come to church and declare I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're not watering it this morning. See, because when you make preaching hard for me, when I got the press through, the fact that you're not worshiping him, I know you're not watering the seed this morning. When I got the press through, Jesus, the fact that you don't know who woke you up this morning, uh, I don't have a heaven nor hell to put you in. But when I got to press through the fact that you don't realize you're clothed in your right mind, you got the activities of your lips, you got breath in your body, you should walk in here telling God, thank you this morning. But when I got to coerce you, when I got to pump you, when I got to sound like I'm fussing, when all I want to do is adore on the Father, all I want to do is sit at his feet, all I want him to do is feel me. Paul says this way, to take every thought captive, Paul says in order to be a baller and a shot caller, you have to learn how to put your thoughts in prison, how to capture every thought that's not lined up with the word. We are out of control. The church is out of control. The body of God is out of control. The family is out of control. The children are out of control because no one has any restraint on their thoughts. And your thoughts will form legs and your thought will become little monsters and your thought will become little demons and your thought will become witches which will turn you anybody's ever been turned out was turned out in their thoughts first get this because we're still on definition to be in control of your flesh To be in control of your flesh. I can't help myself. It's just be calling my name. Because you're not calling on his name. To be, to be in control of your flesh. To, to master, get this. To master or safeguard your tongue. You just can't say whatever you feel like saying. And we now are hyper. I'm just being real. I'm just keeping it real. Well, you real out of control, and God can't bless you because the same mouth that talk like that and the same mouth that shout like that, God says you're double-minded. I don't recognize you. Have you taken your Prozac today? You run in here and speak in tongues and cuss me out on the parking lot in another tongue. And you wonder why, why are you broke? And when I talk about being broke, I'm not just talking about your financial position. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse number 28. Proverbs. 25 and 28, the wise man says this. He who has no self-control over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Okay, now let me, let me make that make sense to you. In those times 
walls represented security. So the enemy couldn't come in and take what God had blessed you with. So if your walls were down, that meant the enemy had free will to come in and take everything that belonged to you. If your walls were down, the enemy would come in and take your stuff. And also, if your walls were down, there's no way you can protect yourself. Because walls are not just to keep the enemy out. Sometimes walls are put up to keep you in. And when there are no walls, that means there are no control mechanisms to keep the enemy out. Because the reality of it is we will fight the enemy back, but will you fight yourself back? Will you attack yourself? Will you tackle yourself? If you saw a strange man running in your front yard toward your wife and your daughters, you tackle him, you beat him down. But when you start running, will you beat yourself down? Will you tackle yourself? It's one tackle I wish I would have made. To tackle myself. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't have broke free to the end zone. But we're going to tackle myself. Because when I thought it was a score, it really was a setback. Truth be told, the only reason Pastor E.A. Decker at this stage of his life is not pastoring a hundred thousand folks because that was a time in his life he was out of control and God had to reprocess him. It was not because of a lack of ability but a lack of self-control. He read too many press clippings. He heard the crowd cheer his name too loud. I wish you would listen today. This is my, this is my, this is my definition. These are my two EA sayings. A person without self-control will self-destruct. A person without self-control will self-destruct. Now tweet that. Number two, he ain't saying. Opportunity and talent may get you in the door. But without self-control, you will eventually get kicked out the door. You can maneuver yourself in, but if you don't have self-control, eventually they escort you out. 